There's a new study that has been covered by popular science looking at how you can lower your blood sugar by simply changing the time frame in which you eat your carbohydrates. It's a very compelling study and we're going to cover this, but before we get started, I'm Dr. Nick Zorowski. Welcome to the channel. Be sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell if you want to learn about all the new videos that come out. And also, if you want to see my whole catalog of natural health improvement videos, go to www.drz.com. TV, and that'll be your first step to improving your health naturally. Now, how to eat sweet foods on a healthy diet. I think this is a really interesting study here. Now, the study that we're going to cover and look at is going to be this one right here. Carbohydrate last meal pattern lowers postprandial glucose and insulin excursion in type 2 diabetes. Now, when we look at the conclusion of the study, basically the conclusion is the carbohydrate last meal pattern may be effective behavioral strat strategy to improve postprandial glycemia. Now, I know that sounds a little confusing. I want to break this down and make it clear. So we're going to refer back to the popular science article. Now, in this article, one of the things that they go on to say is, first of all, there's no reason to cut sugar out completely from your diet. It's a pretty hard thing to do, says Leslie Bonsi, a registered dietitian and sports nutritionist. She says it's unlikely that most people will stick to a sugar-free diet. Everyone, to a certain extent, has a desire for sweet-tasting foods and for a good reason. Sugar provides us with needed energy. So if we eat a diet completely devoid of sugar, psychologically, that can be devastating. Well, that's an interesting concept. Let me finish it, and then I'm going to put some thought to that, right? It's much more productive to think about how to keep your sugar intake as healthy as possible. Now, first of all, there is definitely a reason to cut sugar out completely. If you can go on a sugar-free diet, you will be so much healthier for it. Now, I get what she's saying where, like, psychologically, some people struggle with it, but it doesn't mean that you shouldn't do it. It's like, well, going to the gym is hard, so you shouldn't do it. No, we know that going to the gym is incredibly important. We know that exercising daily, though it's hard, and psychologically, it's very difficult for some people. It's something you definitely should do and benefit from. So... When we look at cutting sugar out completely, it would be a great thing to do. Now, we're not looking for perfection by any stretch of the imagination because whenever we're trying to be perfect with our diet, it's always unsustainable. So what we want to do is get to a sugar-free point to the best of our ability. And so I definitely think it has tremendous benefit according to the research. Now let's go ahead and move on and take a look at some other points specific to this study. So some recent research suggests that we should take it one step further. Eating all carbohydrates, including sugar, last. Studies on post-meal glucose and insulin levels in people with type 2 diabetes show that the order in which we eat various types of food actually matters. The most recent one out in September of, this would be last year, had participants all with type 2 diabetes eat the same exact meal on three different days, but in various order. Okay, this is important. One day, they ate carbohydrates first, followed 10 minutes later by protein and vegetables, and protein and vegetables first, followed by carbs 10 minutes after, and finally, everything eaten together at the same time. Okay, how do you eat your meals? Put in the comments below. Do you typically like figure out uh, or even think about, should I say, if you are going to eat your protein and your veggies first and your carbs last or your carbs first? I mean, is that something that goes through your mind? Put in the comments. I'd like to know that. I would say for me, I don't ever consider that. Now, maybe I'll consider it after reading this article because it is compelling. Researchers measured their blood glucose, insulin, and glucagon levels just after the meals and every 30 minutes for the next three hours. They found that peaks in glucose levels when carbs were consumed last were around 50% lower than when they were consumed first. Now that is extraordinarily significant. Even eating everything at once produced a spike 40% higher then seen when the carbs came last. So basically what they're saying is that if you eat your protein and you eat your vegetables and then you eat your carbohydrates, it had a 50%, you had 50% lower blood sugar just by changing the sequence in which you ate your food versus if you ate the carbs first and then you ate the other foods, then your blood sugar was 50% higher. 
pretty significant. That's, pretty, that's a pretty significant difference, the article goes on to say. In fact, according to the study, the effect of food order on post-meal glucose and hormone levels is comparable to the effect of the drugs meant to regulate glucose. Many people with diabetes are told to limit their carbs and added sugars that they consume. But this research suggests that just switching the order could be as good as limiting the intake altogether. So this is something that's pretty incredible. And I think that uh, it's worth giving it a try. I mean, I think that even if you are eating healthy carbs, so let's say that you're eating a sugar-free diet, but you're allowing for healthier carbohydrate sources. And let's just use, I always like to use a potato as an example, right? So just putting that potato at the end of your meal versus first would be a great way to just naturally lower your blood sugar according to this study. Well, the study was done on diabetics. It was intended and its intended goal was to find the best practice for that group. Study author Louis Aron, a professor of metabolic research at Weill Cornell Medical University, says everyone could use the information gained. Generally speaking, he says, I think it would be best to have salad, vegetables, protein followed by your dessert. Okay. So just kind of the regular custom of having dessert last obviously sets you up in a better place than if you were to have dessert first. So overall, I think this is something that can be definitely utilized for people who are trying to lower their blood sugar naturally. You know, I had, for instance, a person who was a diabetic, um, type two diabetic come into my clinic the other day and they were talking about, uh, you know, the, blood sugar drugs that they were taking, the pharmaceuticals. And I thought to myself, you know, did they even try to do anything differently? You know, what are they doing as far as their diet? And the fact is, is that they were doing nothing. Okay. So if you're somebody who has high blood sugar, or if you're somebody, look, who's just healthy, but still wants to keep your blood sugar low. First of all, you want to make sure that you're focusing on diet first. Going sugar-free is an incredible way. Once again, we're not trying to be perfect with this because perfection is unsta un unsustainable and perfection will never happen. It's the lowest standard you could strive for because it's impossible. So we aren't trying to go for perfection, but as close to sugar-free as possible. Now, the next thing that we can do after that, if we're having high blood sugar, problems is we can actually use some of the different herbs and some of the different vitamins out there in order to help bring our blood sugar lower. And there are many things that you can do, such as berberine, which is actually proven to work just as effective as these different blood sugar medications, uh, which is 100% natural, by the way. Uh, there's also things like um, uh, bitter melon extract and, and so many different nutrients that you can use. So if you have high blood sugar, Look, first of all, change your diet, go sugar-free. Second of all, we know now that you can actually change the, the pattern in which you eat your food in order to help lower your blood sugar. And then after that, you can look to some different vitamins that help bring it down. And, you know, someone had said to me the other day, well, you know, can't you just handle this with diet? Why do you have to use vitamins and, and, and herbs? And I said, well, look, the, the main goal is to actually go in and use the diet to be the strongest tool in your shed. I'm not recommending that anybody follows a poor quality diet and then uses, you know, nutritional herbs in order to counteract their poor diet. I'm recommending that you use the diet and then to take it a step further, use the vitamins and the herbs because the main goal is to keep people off the medication, which doesn't solve the problem, but actually just covers it up and over time it gets worse if we don't actually get to the root cause. So I'm going to leave you with those those thoughts. I will go and put some different uh, vitamins er and herbs in the description below, but comment as to what you think of this situation. Do you think that you should go straight towards the medication? Do you think that you should focus on doing some things naturally in order to lower your blood sugar? And also, what do you think about changing the meal pattern? so that you can lower your blood sugar naturally. Eating those carbs last, I think it is something that's very compelling and I'm certainly gonna give it a try and think about it the next time I'm eating. I'll see you in the next video.